The film is set in Washington, D.C. in the year 2054. The film opens as Anderton and his team are in the midst of apprehending a suspect. In this sequence, it is revealed that the precogs only relate the time date of the murder, the murderer's name, and the victim's name. All other facts of the crime can only be ascertained by clues given by the various images relayed around the time of murder. Images transfer from the precog's minds to a computer display, where Anderton manipulates the images in a manner similar to a virtual reality interface to better determine how the murders might or will happen. Anderton is observed during this process by Danny Whitwer, an agent from the Department of Justice. Whitwer is sent to evaluate the system because the country is about to vote on whether to expand the pre-crime program nationally. Later that day, Anderton goes to his apartment where he watches home movies of his six-year-old son. It becomes evident that his son is deceased and that he is now divorced. The next morning, Whitwer is given a tour of the precog's chamber. The precogs are seen floating in a translucent substance, which a technician explains helps enhance the images that the precogs produce. After the tour, Anderton stays behind, and the precog, Agatha, emerges from the pool. She draws Anderton's attention to the ceiling, which displays images of a woman being murdered. Intrigued by a murder which he's never seen, Anderton decides to investigate. He learns that the other precog's images are on record, but Agatha's recorded images are missing. He then conveys this information to Burgess, who appears unconcerned. Anderton then returns to the pre-crime offices and investigates a new case. A murder is to take place in 36 hours. The murderer is revealed to be Anderton himself. Believing that he is being set up since he doesn't know the victim, Anderton takes it on the lam. He manages to escape Whitwer and a team of pre-crime officers in a car factory and seeks refuge in the country home of a woman named Iris Hindeman, who was one of the pioneers of pre-crime. Hindeman reveals that the three precogs do not always agree in their opinions about the future. When this happens, the dissenting opinion is left out. Thus, Anderton's only hope at proving his innocence is acquiring the hidden minority report, from which the film takes its title. Traveling undetected is difficult since everyone is subjected to retina scans at all times. Therefore, Anderton visits a shady doctor and receives an eye transplant. While sleeping to recover from the surgery, he has a dream where it is revealed that his son was abducted. He awakens to discover that the pre-crime team is investigating the building he is in. The team dispatches spiders, robotic eye scanners, to the various rooms to find and ID Anderton. Anderton tries to hide but is scanned. The surgery proves successful and he is not identified as John Anderton. Later, he manages to reach the pre-crime offices. He takes Agatha out of the nutrient water, permanently disrupting the precog hive mind that makes pre-crime work, and escapes again. Anderton then finds a hacker friend who accesses Agatha's vision of the murder. The vision is identical to the one Anderton intercepted himself. Anderton then goes to Leo Crow's apartment where Crow is not present. While searching the room, he finds a pile of photos of children, one of which is a photo of his son. Anderton suddenly comes to the realization that there is no minority report for himself and that Leo Crow is responsible for kidnapping his son. Anderton had pre-planned this murder, a long-standing wish to kill the previously anonymous person who took his son. Then, Crow enters his apartment, and Anderton attacks him, eliciting a confession. While this is going on, Agatha tries to convince Anderton that he does not have to kill Crow. Anderton reconsiders and reads Crow his Miranda rights. Crow then says that if Anderton doesn't kill him, Crow's family will get nothing. The entire murder was a setup. Crow then grabs Anderton's gun to point it at his chest and manages a cop-assisted suicide by worrying Anderton's hand. Anderton and Agatha then leave the apartment. Whitwer and the pre-crime unit arrive and investigate the crime scene. Whitwer sees the photos and becomes skeptical of what happened due to the orgy of evidence. Whitwer then meets with Burgess to discuss his doubts with him. He shows Burgess the Anne Lively prevision, but two different ones. One from Art and Dash taken from pre-crime, the other a minority report from Agatha. He shows Burgess that the two images have slight differences, such as water lapping in opposite directions. Whitwer intuits that they were altered. Burgess interrupts this analysis with a bullet. Since Agatha is with Anderton, pre-crime is not able to prevent Whitwer's murder. Anderton then hides in his ex-wife Lara's house. While there he comes to realize that he was set up because of his discovery of the Anne Lively murder. Lively is revealed to be Agatha's mother and was killed because she wanted to reunite with Agatha. The police then arrive and arrest Anderton. Later, Burgess accidentally reveals to Lara that he killed Anne Lively. Lara then releases Anderton from prison, and as Burgess is giving a speech, 
Anderton confronts him on his crime by showing everyone in attendance the Agatha prevision of Burgess killing Anne Lively. Burgess takes a gun and starts after Anderton. He eventually decides to commit suicide instead, as killing Anderton would undermine the program itself. In the final sequence, Anderton narrates that pre-crime was shut down. All of the pre-criminals who were imprisoned by pre-crime were unconditionally pardoned and released, and the pre-cogs were taken to a secret location to live in seclusion. Anderton ends up reconciling with Lara, who is now pregnant. 